Hi, Mike from Mike's Carburetor Parts. I'm going to be doing a couple of uh, videos on this uh, Autolite 4100. This is the Autolite 4 barrel, uh, which you find a lot of, uh, uh, we'll say, uh, 68 Mustang uh, T Birds right around there. They, they used a lot of these. Anyhow, um, I'm going to be rebuilding this, and uh, I'll uh, take a couple of videos and um, <clears throat> This one here, we're going to disassemble it. This is the heat shield for the uh, choke. We'll put a new thermostat on here. It's a good idea. I don't know. Of course, I'm really rebuilding it, but when I rebuild something, I like to. I think it's a good time to change floats, chokes, whatever you can at the time. Hey, you don't know how long this stuff's going to be available. Every time I order, uh, put in an order, something gets discontinued. So, uh, anyway, I just feel like I should replace this stuff when I can. Uh, okay, so there's the there's a choke thermostat. This is a manual uh, thermostat, or excuse me, an automatic, I should say, and the. Uh, uh, I have an electric one for this on the website. If you're so inclined, uh, they're pretty easy to hook up. All right, oops, oh, that just fell out. We'll choke uh, our choke arm there, and let's see. We'll just take the top off. I'll put new screws in this and the top make it look good. These 4100s are aluminum and uh, they clean up really nice. Uh, I have a uh, in addition to the uh, uh, basic carburetor kit, I have a hardware drawer kit that uh, goes with the 4100, and it includes new floats, it includes new screws, uh, secondary diaphragm. You don't get a, uh, a secondary diaphragm with, hard, with any of the kits these days uh, for several reasons I won't go into, but at any rate, um, you can get that hardware kit. It's, it's just got just tons of stuff. And uh, it even has a new, uh, oh, I can't think what you call this, but it's a, basically a vent tube. A lot of times these get broken off or, or bent, uh, so they do come in the hardware kit. And there's our gasket. Oh, interesting. These are some really old chokes in them. I think this is a, a real early uh, 4100. Uh-oh. And that float's definitely no good full of fuel. And that was primary side. I don't know if you notice these clips that are on here. That one's empty. Uh, but here's a clip. This is what holds it on to the uh, seat. You put it down in there and then you clip it over the little edge on the seat. I'll just pull one real quick and show you what I'm talking about. There's a little indentation right here. That's why that is there. Okay. This is the uh, secondary side. Our secondary Venturi. It's got a regular uh, screw. And we got our primary side. It's got a little bit of a special screw because the fuel comes up in it and it has to have a gasket. I don't believe there needs to be a gasket on the secondary, but maybe I forget now. Here's your little uh, uh, check ball weight. And then you got a check ball in there. It's right here. Okay, we'll pull out this seat.
And we're going to pull out the uh, main jets. This is the secondary jets here. Now they put two different size jets in these Autolites. The early ones they put more of a Holly type. Oh, excuse me. Um, we have both. These are the regular uh, motorcraft jets. And the size will be printed on the side of them, on these. Um, oh, these are the early kind. Huh. 62, it says. Now, you're going to have the same size both on the, the secondary. If you're not sure about these, uh, a lot of times, a lot of carburetors, I'll put a wire, uh, wire together uh, the two primaries, which is on, over on this side. I know this is the primary side. There's a lot of ways to tell, but one thing, it's got this accelerator pump on it. <clears throat> okay. I if I can see the number on these or not. I'm sure they're smaller. 50-something, 50 54 looks like, maybe. I was going to say they're probably around 55. Anyhow, uh, make sure that uh, you get the same size on each end. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull the... Uh, celery pump off here. these little plastic cookie sheets I use when I work on a carburetor. Um, it's kind of nice, little, those little uh, check balls go rolling around and whatnot. Uh, you know, they, uh, anyway, you don't, they don't fall on the black holes, I call it, on the floor. Uh, the idle mixture screws, um, if they have any kind of a uh, uh, mark on them, for an edge, uh, replace them. That means somebody tightened them up too tight, which happens a lot. Okay. Now, don't forget you have this spring that goes in the accelerator pump, like so. Now, you look right in there, there's a little check ball in there. Uh, don't lose that. And that's kind of a special screw uh, that you need uh, for that. And we'll take the check ball out. There it is. Uh, so. Here's the other. Now this one shows both the same size. I'll clarify that when we uh, go put it together because I'm not sure that's correct. And <clears throat> Let's see what comes in the kit. Uh oh. Somebody really reefed on that one. That's not good. I'll come back to that. This is our power piston, or power valve, I should say. That one was way too loose. These should be pretty tight. Somebody left it loose. I think the gentleman told me somebody rebuilt this not too long ago and it hasn't run right since. I can see why.
but I'll just bet you that tire valve was leaking. Runs off a vacuum, and I'll bet it was leaking right past the valve. Okay. Alright, so there's our uh, choke housing. Uh, all kinds of stuff hooked on the back. Yours might be a little bit different than this one. There's a 4100s that basically look alike, but uh, uh, there's a few that are a little different. Okay, we're going to take our linkage off for which looks all bent up. Could be from the shipping. Good old post office. All right, you got a plastic lever. We do have these available. I may be the only one creation that has them because uh, uh, remember they told me they were discontinuing them about whatever they had left. And you may have the one with the metal um, lever. somebody put a different screw in this so that's a red flag to me now either they lost the screw which is okay because I'm gonna put new ones in it or they stripped it and put a another screw in it okay this is your secondary and the secondary see you have a spring on it the secondary uh, diaphragm does not come in any of the kits and unless you buy the hardware kit, it's included there. Uh, now, this one here, there's a clip on the back of it. You probably can't see it. Anyway, the secondary diaphragm, as long as they're uh, limber and you can't find any holes in it, uh, it typically you won't have to change it unless you uh, uh, want to go for, you know, do the best. Uh, it's only a matter of money. Anyhow, uh, you know, they just get vacuum. They don't get any uh, fuel, so they uh, tend to last for a long time. So it's a good chance that, uh, that uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to change it. Now, I will be putting a new one in this one. If I can get it off, it sure doesn't seem to fit that peg very well. This is what I call a female um, because the hmm. I think I'd drill that out a little bit. All these catches in there besides. Come on, get off of there. Goodness. Okay, well, there it is. So uh, that's a female. You can see it's got the hole in it. And there's a, most of them have a male. They have a little stud in it. And these will be metal. So if you have the metal one, it'll be, me it'll be male. Unless somebody's modified it for some reason. Okay, so you could take the pin out here. I'll just leave it in there. I think it'll be fine. Um, okay, so there we go. We're going to take the uh, dash pot off. I was able to... Oh my, I'm going to have to work on that one so we won't do it on... On the, on the air, so to speak. Okay, now I'm going to start out cleaning it like this. And let's see, maybe I'll go ahead and take these out. What I do is uh, I'll mark these things. I 
just put a little mark on the inside. Because I want them back in the same place. You don't want these things. Now if you're skittish about these, I guess I should check the check see how loose they are. Not too bad there. I think that one's okay too. Um, you gotta be careful these not to not to break them. Now, a lot of times they'll be mushrooms. on this side and you just take your little Dremel tool and uh, grind it down flush so that uh, your screws come out easily otherwise you chance breaking them and then it's a real pain if you don't have good tools tapping drilling and tapping these things or it's not easy you may ruin it so anyway, just be careful. If you're worried about it, don't take them apart. I like to. I get it good and clean. I like shining this stuff up. I'm going to have to... Now what I may actually have to do, because those are brass, I don't want to mess them up. I may have to clean this. Make sure, yeah, see these are, they're sticking through, but they're not mushrooms. So somebody's replaced them somewhere along the line. Ah, same thing, I gotta work on them. What I do a lot of times is I'll take a hammer and hit them a little bit to loosen them up, but sometimes cleaning them will, will uh, do it. Okay, so there's a little stud thing in here and that will, uh, we'll be using that to adjust this. So um, that's another thing. It does need to be loose, and this one is, so it's good. You're going to have to turn this, most likely. Um, so at this point, i got to get this other stuff off, which I will do off camera. Uh, I'm going to uh, put it in our cleaner and uh, get it clean, and then we'll do a video on putting it back together. Thank you for watching.